This is a review and tutorial about procedural crowds. Procedural crowds is an add-on that you can get on the Blender market and it automates the creation of digital crowds in Blender. With this add-on, populating your scene with people that stand around, cheer, walk or run becomes easy and intuitive. This video will show you how to set things up. The add-on provides a set of default humans, but I'm going to show you how to replace them with your own custom models so that you can have any type of crowd or animation you want. Let's take a look at procedural crowds. When you buy it, you'll have access to these downloads. So you have one zip file, which is the actual add-on, and also assets. So you need to download both of these. And I'm going to talk about custom models a little bit later. You have to unzip the assets, but the add-on keep as a zip file. So you'll have something like this. This is the add-on, and these are the unzipped assets as a folder. Then in Blender, go to Edit Preferences, Add-ons, click Install. Go to the add-on zip file and install it. Activate it. Expand the add-on options. Find the asset folder. Click here. Navigate to your assets folder and accept. And that's it, the add-on will be activated now. And you'll find it in the end panel, Procedural Crowds. This add-on is extremely intuitive. You have several types of crowd, which I'm going to demonstrate quickly. You have crowd settings, which become available once you add the crowd. And you can also add individual humans, which I'm not going to touch in this video, because we are focusing on the crowds. So I'll select the audience type first, click Add Crowd, and I'll have a crowd of people right away. And then I can tweak some settings here. Uh, you can control how wide the crowd is, how far back it goes, increase and decrease the scale of the people, randomize the scale. Personal space will create denser or more sparse crowds. And possibility will just increase or decrease the number of people that you have with the current settings. Seed is just a random seed, so it will create a slight variation. You can define a floor, that is why I have this ground object here, so I'll just use the picker. And if some of the people are clipping in the ground, you can just drop the crowd object and move it in the z-axis, and everybody will be standing on the ground. So if you play the animation, you have a simple idling animation. You can change it here to cheering animation. So that's nice for creating crowds for concerts, sports events, and so on. You also have point of interest, which is also self-explanatory. If I create any object, let's say an empty, and define it as point of interest, the crowd will start looking at it. Currently, there is a little bug which uh, makes the crowd behave like this. You can just go to geometry nodes and zoom in on this node here and change it to pivot Z, and that will fix the problem. The add-on developer told me about this fix. I contacted them, they replied right away, so that is another good sign that this is a good add-on developed by passionate people. I'm going to delete this crowd and create the next type, which is circle. Add crowd, and again we have similar options. I'm going to define my floor. The point of interest works here without any problem actually. And again you have idling or cheering. You have intuitive controls for controlling the size of the crowd. You can have a full or part of a circle. Next, we can have a crowd that follows a path. And um, first you need a curve object. Create a Bezier object, go to edit mode, and you can edit it here manually, or you can delete all vertices, use the draw tool, change it to surface, and just draw a line on your surface. Then in object mode with this curve selected, choose follow path and add crowd and you'll have people walking along the path. Again, floor object to make them conform to the floor. You can switch direction. You can make them run or walk. And either way, at first they'll kind of stand in place, but you can increase the speed value. For walking, around five is nice. For running, something like 12. You can play with the values and again, the remaining controls are super intuitive. You can randomize the speed, but I found that you should use very low values, like below 0.1. Otherwise, the randomization is a bit too strong. The next crowd type is March. 
and it also uses a Bezier spline. So I can just go to the modifiers and delete this geometry node modifier, switch to March, and again with this curve selected, press Add Crowd. And that creates a crowd that walks in rows and columns. You can use this randomization option to make it more random. And if you randomize it too much, it becomes very similar to the follow curve one. So to use it as extended, keep this randomization value low. So this is great for creating crowds such as armies. And again, you can increase the speed to make them walk. You can again toggle run and you'll have to increase the speed. You can set a floor again. So again, very intuitive. Let's see this. The next type of crowd is a bit different. It's called random walk. So let me hide this ground and add crowd. This type of crowd is not based on geometry nodes, unlike the other ones. It's based on the old particle systems. And if you play, you see that you have this emitter and you have a large crowd of people just walking around. This type of crowd can be useful if you need an area that just needs to look busy. You can add objects to the scene. If I then select the object, shift select the crowd, and click the set collision button and start the simulation from the beginning. The people should start bouncing off the obstacle. There is also this goal empty and most of the people will aim at the goal. So if you move it in another position and reset the simulation, most people should aim for it. Um, sometimes Blender doesn't really update the cache. So you have to tweak a setting and start from the beginning. And you'll see most people aiming at the goal. And let's look at the final type of crowd, stadium, which I think will be very useful to a lot of people. For this type of crowd, you need to select an object first, and it should look something like this. Then press Add Crowd, and you'll see how it added people to all surfaces that weren't completely vertical. So if you need more control, you can create this stair type mesh, or if you just want to quickly place the crowd, you can use this kind of simple mesh at an angle, and the add-on will populate it with people. You have the same intuitive control as with the other crowds. And you have two main options here. You can use the custom geometry that we selected at first. And in this case, you'll use these settings here to control the density of the crowd. Or you can use this checkbox and that will switch to a default mesh. Uh, so your initial mesh will be ignored and you'll be able to control your crowd with these five settings here. You have the size of the crowd on Y and X and also the density on Y and X. Super intuitive. And you can also control the rotation of the distribution surface. And these are the basics of procedural crowds. I'm sure a lot of you will want to use your own custom models for the crowds, and I'm going to show you how to do it. First, I want to show you how to prepare your animated models. I know many of you will be using Miximo, so that's why I also got some models from Miximo, but you can use any rigged model that you like. So here I have two models that have walking animations. So I'll demonstrate on a walking animation, but any animation will work in the same way. Right now they're overlapping. I can just select one of them and uh, move it to the side. That's okay. And now we have several problems. First of all, the armatures and the meshes have unapplied scale and rotation. And that is not good. And the other problem is that if I play the animation, it will stop after one cycle, but we want it to cycle forever. And one final problem is that, for example, this model consists of multiple meshes. So to fix the rotation, just select everything and press Ctrl A and choose rotation. Apply rotation. All rotation will be applied and that won't be a problem. Now, if you apply the scale in the same way, 
you'll see that the animation of this model was completely whacked. So let's undo. So this is a very common problem and to solve it you can use Game Break Tools. This is an add-on by CG Dive and it is pay what you want so you can download it for free as well. On Game Break Tools use the apply armature scale function and with these settings you can press OK. And now if you check your scale everything will be applied and your animation will be intact. Now to fix the looping it's very easy. Select one of the armatures switch to graph editor, press A to select everything, press F3 and type cycles and choose this option and that will make the animation cycle. And you have to do the exact same thing for all armatures that you have. Just make them cycle. Okay, and now the final problem that we have is with this model that consists of multiple meshes. Just select one of the meshes and then box select over everything else. Do not select any of the other characters and press Ctrl J. And this is what you need. You have to have only one mesh per character and your animations need to loop. Otherwise your crowd will start sliding after one walk cycle. Oh, and make sure that your walking and running animations are animated in place like here. If your characters move forward in space as they walk, that is a problem and you have to fix it. Miximo in particular has this in place option for walks, so check it before you download your animations. And it's also a good idea to have your models in real world size, so if you select your mesh and check the dimensions here, you can see if your character has the proper scale. You may want to save this file. And next, let's see how we can set up custom characters in procedural crowds. In the downloads for the add-on, you have this custom models.zip. If you download it, you can open the zip file and then go to your assets folder. This is the same folder that we set up at the beginning in the add-on options. Go inside, go to the crowd models, and then drag and drop this custom models uh, from the zip file in the crowd models folder and rename it to whatever you like, like my humans. Now if I open a new blend file and go to procedural crowds and look under models, you'll see that my humans has been added. So now if I add a crowd, I won't see anything and that is because I haven't set up my custom humans. So I have to go here in the my humans folder and open these blend files one by one and set them up. You have collections for your meshes and armatures and the add-on creators have a video showing how to set this up correctly. This can be time consuming but if you have a set of models and animations that you want to use over and over it can be worth it. So if you need this follow this video I'll share a link but now I'm going to show you a quick and dirty way to add your own custom characters uh, without too much hassle. Let's undo this and let's switch to casual humans and add a crowd. And actually because in um, my example files I have walking characters, I won't use the audience but I'm going to use the follow curve one, create a Bezier curve, tweak it a bit and then create uh, a crowd and that will give me the default humans. Now I'm going to go to this blend file where I prepared my custom characters, select everything and press Ctrl C and then go back to this file, create a new collection, call it my characters or something like that. And with this collection selected, press Ctrl V and that will paste these two characters in the scene. And now I can select the crowd, go to the modifiers and under walk collection, I'll just switch it for my characters. Now here is a little problem. The armatures are also objects and so the add-on will also instantiate them. To fix this, create a new collection, call it armatures and just drag and drop the armature objects into the new collection and that's it. Now only the meshes will be instantiated. Now if I select the crowd and tweak the parameters, uh, in particular the speed, you'll see that 
the characters walk backwards. So one way to fix this is to give it a negative speed. That's easy. Uh, or if you want to fix it properly, you can select each armature and from the top view, rotate it 180 degrees and press Ctrl A and apply the rotation. Same for the other armature. Okay. And also select the meshes and apply the rotation. And now the characters will walk correctly and I can use positive speed settings. And of course I can uh, switch the direction and it will work exactly as expected. If I switch to a run animation, the models will also switch and that is because for the running we are using this collection of the casual humans. So if you want to switch that as well, you'll have to prepare your running animations and organize them here in this scene in the exact same way with uh, collections for the meshes and armatures. And then use the mesh collection here in the run collection field. And the exact same can be done for the idle collection. I hope this makes sense and if you are interested in procedural crowds, you'll find a link to the add-on in the video description. If this video has been useful, please give it a like and subscribe with the all option to get notified when I release new Blender tutorials, reviews and so on.